Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm your host, Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com, and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, the four crucial factors that make up masculinity. Okay, really quickly before we get started, if my content resonates with you and you feel like, gosh, you'd like to talk to me to see if coaching works for you, then check out the link below and also check out the link for my VIP group as well. All right, we're going to talk about masculinity today. I know you ladies love the idea of masculine and feminine energy because the masculine leads and the feminine receives. Wait, the masculine leads and the feminine receives. Well, wait a minute, that's not right. Masculine leads and the feminine receives. Okay, I know you love this because this makes up exactly how relationships work because men should be doing, 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 doing. And all you have to do is receive, 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 receive. Well, if that really worked, then why aren't you happy? Because men aren't doing, right? <laughs> but you got to understand why, because this whole conversation about masculine and feminine energy is so skewed out of proportion because until you understand male behavior or actually let me backtrack. Until you understand human behavior, all of this stuff is a lot of talk, 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 talk. It's just a bunch of rhetoric because it's so hard to determine masculine and feminine energy. How do you know? Is he 66% masculine, 30% feminine? Is he 72% masculine and 28% and feminine? If, am I, as you a woman, are you 66 and 24? And this? How are you going to figure out your percentages to see if there's polarity? I mean, it's so confusing. You can see I get riled up on this. So I'm going to talk about the real nitty gritty behind male behavior. OK, the Neil, the real nitty gritty about around male behavior so you can understand men better and actually you can understand yourself better, because let's throw out the rhetoric of masculine and feminine. Let's just say the words man or woman or let's just say human being. So what makes up a human being? Well, I have what I call the ABCs. C's, okay, A, B, C's, two C's, okay? And if you understand the ABCs of human behavior, this is going to make a big difference in understanding men in particular. And when you understand men, you can predict their behavior. And when you can predict their behavior, you can make better choices. So let me ask you, do you want to make better choices with men? If you said yes, please post a comment right now and say yes, exclamation point. I want to make better choices when it comes to men. Okay, so the ABCs stand for this. Remember, there are four crucial, four crucial factors that you have to remember in these ABCs. All right, the A stands for age. The age of a man makes a big difference. So the problem with most dating advice, it's centered around, you know, men that are in their 20s and 30s, those men that are the hunters and drivers and all centered around age, age 20 and 30 year old, most dating advice. In fact, very little dating advice helps women understand men in midlife. And I always say midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. What am I? I'm a midlife dating and relationship coach. So if you want to understand men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, better talk to someone like myself versus those that are coaching people in their 20s and 30s. Because there's a big difference with age. And what is it? Life experience. A person in their 20s, or excuse me, a person in their 50s is a lot different than someone in their 20s. So age makes a big factor in making up a person's personality, to make up their masculinity, to make up their behavior. We have to start with age and just understand that all dating advice doesn't apply to every age group. So when you're listening to advice, you have to go beyond the age. You have to go beyond the age. And that's why we're going to go with the B. The next is the B. So we said the A is age and B is biology. Yes, biology. Men naturally are uh, driven by testosterone to some degree, and that certainly makes up a part. By the way, ladies, never do this in front of a guy. Never do that. I can do that, but you can't do that. But it makes up a part of a person's personality and their behavior is their biology. And yes, testosterone drives us. It makes us somewhat single focused. It makes us need to go in the cave and that sort of thing. It makes us hunters and that sort of thing. But it is such a small percentage of understanding human behavior. 
such a very small percentage of understanding human behavior. And while there are some undertones that are important to understand this, we have to go beyond the biology. And even within biology, I'm gonna say that on some degree, I'm gonna include this in biology, but I'm gonna even say intelligence is important in this factor too. Because the more intelligent a person is, the less they tend to be driven by their biology, by their primal forces, the more intelligent the person is. And I, that's just, now I'm gonna say that's a judgment on my part. I'm not saying that from a basis of absolute fact, but it seems to make sense. The more a person is intellectual, the more they're in their head, the less they are in their body. So the person that's more in their body tends to be more primal in the way they approach dating and relationships. And the more person who's more in their head tends to be more cerebral. So we can even look at that from the factor of biology that makes a difference. So we can't lump masculine and feminine into man and woman these ways because you have to look at the complexities of a human being, the complexities. That's why I'm talking about the ABCs right now. Okay, the C, the C, the first C, because there's two Cs, the first C is culture. Culture, a person's culture makes up their personality. It makes up their behaviors and that sort of thing. Certainly, um, you know, Asian men are different than Muslim men, different than, and, and, you know, culture, even Jewish, even though it's a religion, it's also a culture. And, you know, my heritage is Mediterranean. So even my culture is different than, say, a person who was born and raised in America and their lineage is predominantly American or English and that sort of thing. Because your culture, how you're brought up, from your culture makes a big difference on how you show up in a relationship. There's all these tiny little building blocks that make up a person's personality, that makes up their masculinity or their femininity, if you will. And by the way, everything I'm sharing actually applies for women as well. This isn't singular to a penis or a vagina. It's, it's basic human understanding of behavior. And your culture makes a big difference in how you were raised by your parents or your surrogate parents or your collective family around you makes a big difference in understanding a person's behavior, understanding their masculinity, especially when it comes to dating, mating, and relating. And I'm gonna to get to that point in a second because the fourth one, and this is hugely important, the fourth one is um, their conditioning. They're conditioning. What I mean to say is how they were conditioned as children and how they were conditioned as adults. For example, and most of you know I talk about this frequently, if not incessantly, I talk about childhood wounds and traumas. Childhood wounds and traumas. And if you're not familiar with the Hoffman process, it's a deep dive in healing your, in, your childhood wounds and traumas that make up your personality as adults because it is through our, our wounding that makes up oftentimes our negative patterns and our limiting beliefs in life. It is from our wounding and traumas that can make up our negative patterns and limiting beliefs. So this is why people show up so chaotic in relationship because they haven't healed the basic foundation of the wounds that may have happened in childhood. This is also another reason why love attachment style, and if you're not familiar with attachment styles, where's my book attached? Uh, well, I don't have it here, but you've seen me post it, show it before. Check out the book attached because these are all the factors that make up who we are as a person. It's our love attachment style, styles, our wounding, our traumas. And it's not just in childhood, but in adulthood. So for those people that have gone through divorces and they're traumatized by it, or maybe they've lost a job, or maybe they've had health issues, or maybe they had a family member or passed away. Or in my case, having my son pass away, that affects who I am as a person. So this whole rhetoric around masculine and feminine energy and the guy is going to do and you're going to receive is going to make it so much easier to understand relationship. And I'm saying that's hogwash because you have to understand human behavior. The ABC, oops, eyelash, the ABCs with two C's, age, biology, culture, and conditioning. This is what makes up a person and that's why people can be so incredibly chaotic. This is why I'm a big proponent 
of self-love, of self-love. My book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Because this is the path to inner peace. This is the path to becoming a whole person, whether you're a man or woman. When you become aligned with your masculine and feminine energy, basically when you become aligned in a human being, when you become aligned and healed, your wounds, traumas, and pains, and suffering, and you've actually operating the world from those um, from emotional maturity. And if you haven't watched my uh, video on emotional maturity, check it out. I talk about the five signs of emotional maturity because that's what matters most in the dating, mating, and relating realm. Not masculine, not polarity. Polarity is great for the bedroom. I get it. You want the man to be dominant so you can be submissive in the bedroom. And some of you don't want that, but a lot of you do. But that sounds great for the bedroom, but not for a healthy, happy relationship. If you want to score a healthy, happy relationship, then you definitely have to read the book Eight Dates that I talk about 100,000 times in my videos. This is the pathway to figuring out how to have a great relationship. John Gottman and his wife, Julie, talk about how to create an amazing relationship. That's how you're going to make that happen in your life. It's not about masculine and feminine energy. It's about becoming a whole person within yourself, becoming that sovereign person that can step into relationship going, I know who I am and I know the value I show up and I'm going to set healthy boundaries for myself. And I understand the way men operate because I understand the ABCs, that age, biology, culture, and conditioning makes up a person's masculinity. Whoa, did I cover a lot. God, I was on a roll there. All right. I'm sure you have some questions, so let's hear from you. Write a comment. Ask a question. I'm, I read all. I do my best to read everything, so write something down. If you have a question, I'm going to read. I'm going to do my best to even respond or like or, or give it a thumbs up or whatnot. If you feel like that you want more of a personal touch, then check out my group, Midlife Love Mastery. It's my VIP group for those that have minimal resources. It's incredibly uh, inexpensive. But it, and if you want to work with me directly and you've got the resources, check out that link as well. All right. I'm going to wrap up this video and I'm going to give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. And I'm going to ask you to give yourself a hug right now because we all need hugs. I'm going to give one to myself on your behalf as well. And I'm going to wish you a super duper wonderful, fantastic day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now.